Hi, and welcome to this Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the Application Specialist for the Steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to talk to you about some of the options you may want to set in your model, especially when you're first beginning a project. Now you can access these options by going under your file menu and simply choosing settings and then options. Now I don't want to go over every single option that's in here, but I think it's a good idea to have a general idea about what some of these do. So I want to go over some of my maybe my favorite settings or my most commonly used settings um, and the rest I'll point out where you can find more information about them. So first off when you open it up it does default to the general tab um, or the general section and here's where you can set your autosave. Now my autosave may not match your autosave but basically what Tecla is saying is every so many commands how often do you want us to create a quick backup of what you're doing? Now when you're looking at the number of modeling commands, what that means is when you activate something like the beam tool and you start creating beams, that's one command until you interrupt. So you could create 10 beams, 20 beams with one command. So it might be uh, in your best interest to set this a little bit lower than you might have it right now. I think the default might be 25 commands or something like that. But as far as some other options you might change, I'm just going to start at the top here looking at clash check. Something that's pretty nice that's been added in recent versions is this penetration volume, or basically the amount of overlap between two parts. So if you are writing something like a K a little bit, you're not going to get a clash check on there where you normally would in older versions. One of the most critical ones is for bolt clearances. You can see here that under the bolt clearances, we're looking at two times the diameter of the head of the bolt and one times the um, thickness of the nut. So basically the gray area that you see there is kind of looking at the uh, what space is required to actually insert this bolt in this situation. So if something is back here on the other side and encroaches on the head, you're going to get a clash check. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be inserted. Now, you know, in the real world, you can simply turn the bolt around and insert it from the other direction. But it's definitely a great way to just check for that sort of uh, erectability issue that you could run into. Some other settings coming into components. Now when you're looking at uh, a cone, a connection cone, and it's green, sometimes they'll turn yellow for an edge distance problem. This bolt section where it's talking about the factor of bolt edge distance is what's triggering that yellow cone. So it's looking at 1.2 times the diameter of a bolt, um, which is pretty standard, but that's why you're getting those yellow cones sometimes when you have bolts going through like four inch flanges. Your standard bolts are also being set up here. The default uh, US Imperial settings is probably going to go to a standard A325N hex head bolt. This current model, I have them set up for TC bolts. When you set up your standard bolt size and standard here, that means that all components will use that size and standard and you don't have to set them up manually. Here's where you can also set up your standard part material and then your part numbering prefixes and start numbers. And where these really kick in is whenever you see in a component dialog box where it's either blank or it says default in a drop down menu, it's going to use these values for your bolt standards, sizes, and then your part materials and uh, piece marks. The drawing dimensions, there's a lot of uh, options in here obviously, but something that I do want to point out is the ability to show dual dimensions. Um, so when you want to show a dual dimension, here's where you're talking about this dimensions in tags. So uh, a lot of uh, different industries, especially when you're coming down to things like government contracts or maybe highway projects, you have to provide dual dimensions in the U.S. where you have U.S. Imperial and metric. So here's the ability to set this up where you want to see those dual dimensions. And I can simply check these options. Do I want to see them in assembly drawings, single part drawings, cast unit drawings, and GA drawings? It's already set up to use metric, but you can obviously adjust those settings as need be. Like I said, there's a lot of other options in this section. I don't have the time really to go through all of them, but those are kind of the ones that I tend to focus on when I'm making adjustments to my models. Coming down to some of these other tabs, there's not a whole lot I do with drawing objects or load modeling, um, but I will make adjustments sometimes for certain customers to the numbering settings. Um, some people want to have a separator when they have like B10, they want to have uh, you know some kind of dot or dash or something like that between them. This is one way that you can set that up. Um, the orientation marks is something that you might want to adjust. Obviously uh, north direction is going to be a critical point when you're installing things like columns. So right now the default is simply saying 90 degrees from global X so straight up is north. If you need to change that to a different project north you can simply type in the degrees here. When you go to set up your GA drawings you're still going to have to manually set your uh, symbol in most cases your north symbol for which direction north should be but this is going to affect when you have a column it's actually marking one side north or south or east or etc. 
Most of the other settings on here I'll usually leave at default. Um, they're simply set up to identify the left end of a beam, uh, what's going to be considered a column. Um, so those types of settings are pretty much preset and don't require a lot of tweaking in most cases. Um, the last one that I really want to talk about, um, we're going to skip over reinforcement here since this is a steel focused uh, video and simply go to units and decimals. Some people like to work in units other than fractional feet and inches. Now that's how Tecla is set up by default. You can always use decimal inches or something like that if you want to. But this is simply what's going to be displayed first in the model uh, when you do a measurement. So right now it's going to show feet and inches, but if you want to show decimal feet or decimal inches or something like that, you can simply change that value here. But this is only going to be for how you're creating things in the model and when you measure them, what's going to show up. Um, if you actually want to change how parts are being called out, and, and this is really critical for people doing things like sheet metal and light gauge and stuff like that, is you want to change your profile section dimension as well. Right now, again, it's going to be in inches, um, but if you were to change that to something like uh, inch decimal, then you can really get down to the fine-tuned plate thicknesses and things like that. Otherwise, Tecla is always going to default to a 1 16th plate thickness, even if you type in some type of fractional or some type of small decimal for like sheet metal. So if I change this to inch decimal, set this to maybe four decimal places, then I can really get model objects that are truly as thin as they're supposed to be in the real world. So the catalogs affects the physical parts. The modeling is what you see when you're doing like move commands, copy commands, measure commands, and things like that. Now for any of these, and there's a lot of other settings in here, like I said, I don't really have time to go too deep, and most of these, you know, most people are never actually going to change. But if you ever do have questions about any of these, and this is true for any dialogue in Tecla, all you have to do is have the window or the dialog box selected and simply type the F1 key. What that will do is we'll open up the help file um, or essentially it's pointing to an internal browser that's going to open up the Tecla user assistance. So as you can see, it takes me right to the uh, page talking about settings in the options dialog box. And when I start scrolling down, it's breaking down the different individual sections, covering the things that I spoke about and covering a lot of the things that I didn't speak about. So your class check settings, your component settings and whatnot. And then obviously, if you have questions about these and, the, and you can't quite find out what you're looking for, you can always contact your local help desk. So I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, setting these things up at the beginning of a project can really help uh, just make things a little bit more streamlined. As always, thank you for watching.